So, data loss prevention solution with the Microsoft Graph. There is already, of course, a data loss prevention available in Microsoft 365, uh, and part of it is insider risk management, or it's pure view these days. Um, insider risk management, it's, it's very good, but it's a very broad spectrum of alerts. So you not only email checking and seeing who, who sends emails, for instance, uh, externally with attachments, but also SharePoint and, and Teams, and then the US even, you can even see if somebody downloads something to a USB drive, stuff like that. So it's very, very broad. If, for instance, in our case, we needed to check, okay, what if people are leaving? And that's one of the main cases of insider risk management. Uh, an employee leaves the company, uh, or is he going to take, I don't know, the, the the Excel file with all the customers in it uh, along with him to, the, to his next job? Yeah, that's maybe not a good idea, or we don't want that. So you can create what's called an HR connector. So actually, it's a CSV file, and you can upload that to PowerShell, and then the system knows, okay, this person has recently got this resignation or got fired or did, uh, gave his resignation himself. Um, so um, we can set, okay, this is the date he got his resignation, and this is the date that he actually leaves the company, and then he's monitored a little bit more. All very good, but yeah, as you all know, it's not customizable. So um, how to create your own email monitoring solution? Now, uh, let's do demos because I'm not a slight kind of person. So um, let's go. I'll first show you the insider risk management. So if you want to do the uh, HR connector, as it's called, you can go to Microsoft Preview, say data connectors. Uh, you create your own connector, which is um, creating an Active Directory uh, app registration, just client ID and secret. You don't need to give it any permissions. Then you say this is a connector, you get a connector job ID and you create your own CSV file. I have it somewhere here. See, just email address, resignation date and last working date. I took two people here. I upload that one with a script. So it's it's kind of also a little bit of custom development because yeah, you see this script. OK, it's an example provided by Microsoft, but it's one hell of a script. It's let me check uh, 300. I don't need to zoom in, but it's 362 lines. So it's not there. Uh, not perfect. And now everybody knows my client secret, but I'll change it afterwards. And then in information risk management, inside the risk management, you can say, OK, this is the policy and I want to check, uh, for instance, everybody who got uploaded. Um, Microsoft recommends that um, the CSV file, you upload that and daily you schedule the script and daily things change. So every day you um, export that information. It's all good, but of course, security guys, we all know them, they need a lot more information. So how are we going to, uh, if somebody, for instance, uh, sends an email outside of the company, how are we going to check that? Because this was, as you can see, let me see if I can create a policy, let's show you the policy. For instance, the, uh, let me check, next, 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 next. As you can see here, the threshold, for instance, uh, at 10 to 20 events a, a day generates a low severity alert. Yeah, we don't want an alert. No, we really want to see what people are doing. So classic way to do that is create a webhook or a subscription on somebody's inbox. Uh, I think everybody, most people, this has been around for quite a while. So we create a subscription on somebody's inbox with the Microsoft Graph, meaning every time somebody sends an email, I think in this case, it's uh, in my inbox. So every time I get an email, but if you change this to send items, also works. So every time I get an email, uh, this, uh, the graph will notify my webhook, so an endpoint I put publicly somewhere with a, there's something, something has happened. It will not say what has happened, but it will say something has happened, and then I will have to uh, get that information myself. So get, check what, what, what is the event that occurred, so what was the email, get the email, and then do my rules. So we use an Azure function for this one. As you can see here, we have a notification function. Um, we get notified, and of course, that's the entire thing with the webhooks. So the moment you create a subscription, the uh, function has to be alive because it, uh, the webhook will check the subscription. Hey, is it alive? Uh, is the webhook alive? So is that Azure function alive? And then you get a token, and you have to send that token back. And then once you ins once that's okay, the subscription will keep alive for a certain amount of time, depending on what service it is. SharePoint, it's re uh, really long, it's longer. I think Exchange is only a week or something. So every week you need to update that subscription. So uh, let's just uh, create one. Uh, I created one, so I will create a subscription. And at the same time, of course, my function has to be online already. So I have my ng running here somewhere. As you can see, 
I have my uh, uh, it's this function dot dot io. So it's actually not simple to debug build because you're creating a subscription. So where do I create my subscription? Let me delete all the subscriptions. And then the moment I create my subscription, of course, my webhook has to be alive. As you can see here, if I go to all of this, there is a token in it and I have to send that token back. Otherwise, the graph will say, hey, this is not a valid endpoint. Uh, I'm not creating your subscription. So the moment I do that, now I've returned that subscription is active and I have a valid subscription, meaning if I send an email to myself, I think it was on inbox. So let me just check. So if I send from an other email, yeah, we don't need labels, of course. So if I send an email to myself on my inbox, where is it? This one just test, then we're good to go. Then we should get a notification from the Microsoft graph. Hey, there was an email coming in. Should happen every second. Now, if the email comes in, should happen. There we go. Takes a while for the email to come in. Now the email came in, and now I should have a trigger if everything goes well. Not yet. No trigger. Okay. So as you can see, this is the point I'm making. It's hard to debug. It's hard to create because you're working with ng rock and all all that stuff. You have to make sure that your function is already prepared before you can even start creating a subscription. So it's very hard to build as well. There is, of course, a new way to do this. That's with an event hub. So we can also say, hey, um, instead of using my own um, webhook or webhook, yeah, webhook that I created, we can also say, okay, Microsoft Graph, go to the event hub. So I created an event hub, and then the Microsoft Graph will say, okay, uh, instead of going to the the endpoint of the um, webhook of the Azure function you created. Let's go to uh, the endpoint of an event hub. It's also a little bit more secure and a little bit more stable because, of course, if you let's say, for instance, turn off your Azure function or you have to keep it alive because it goes to sleep, this event hub never goes to sleep. So, how does it work? Actually, it's pretty cool because um, you first have to create a key vault, and on that key vault, you'll say, hey, um, the connection string to my event hub, well, that connection string, that's actually hidden. So this is the connection string to my event hub. I put that in the key vault and I actually tell the Microsoft Graph, don't take my connection string to my event hub, but that because that would not be secure. No, hey, Microsoft Graph, you get access to my key vault. As you can see with access control, you should see here role assignments and there is a very specific one. Uh, where is it? There is a very specific one called a graph. Um, I think it only has access to the secret, of course, called graph automation. And that graph automation um, app registration, it's already in your tenant, will have access to that um, connection string and will get that connection string for you first off, and then we'll publish something to the event hub. So um, if you can see that, if I go back to the event hub, sorry for this one, as you can see here, with this event up, we have two policies, shared access policies, two policies, the graph. So the Microsoft graph can only send to my event hub and my custom code can only listen on my event hub. So in an event hub, you have senders and you have listeners. So in this case, it's very secure because my custom code can only listen. It cannot intervene with the event hub. It cannot send other stuff. No, only the graph can send stuff to that um, uh, event hub. So if we go back to our code, we have a durable function here. Also, we have an, a second problem that we also have. Uh, what if, so as uh, you saw, I created a subscription. So in the, where's my, this one? So I created my subscription. This takes, come on, for instance, let's say 10 seconds. Now, let's say, let's say two seconds that it runs to create a subscription. What if we have like 50,000 users? We have to keep that subscription alive, so meaning every, for exchange every week, we have to do an update of the subscription because it's going to expire. So you give an expire date, but there's a max limit, of course. So what if you have to do like 50,000 times two seconds? Yeah, that takes a long time and you're running code again and again and again and again and again. Well, and of course, maybe we don't want to check all users. Maybe we want to check, uh, I don't know, certain active directory groups. 
Okay, you're building code again to check Active Directory groups, uh, who's a member of this group, the people we have to monitor, and then maybe whatever rule you can find on people who to check, you have to write that custom code yourself. Well, there's also a cool old trick to it, and it's called transportation rules. It's been around for millions of years, and I created a simple transportation rule that says every time Rick sends an email, so this is just me, but we can add multiple conditions. So there's more conditions, the recipient, if it has attachments, uh, what are the message properties, are they headers? This has been a, a, around a long time ago. So it will you uh, if you go to an exchange expert, they will configure that perfectly for you. So every time Rick sends an email, we'll send an incident report. It's called an incident report, and you send it to a mailbox. This way, it's easy to configure if the sender is a member of that group or if the sender is a shared mailbox, whatever, you can configure that in these conditions. This is the little bit of the ugly part. I'm still figuring that one out, but you get an incident report, meaning it looks like this. Let me open it up. It's just plain text. So Rick sent an email. It was Microsoft Build. I sent it to this recipient and it was data platform. So it generated an incident report because I created an email. I created a monitor email inbox, meaning I just have to create a subscription from the Microsoft Graph on one, on one inbox because, yeah, it's only one inbox that I have to monitor. Making it easier, I just have to run that two-second subscription update at the end of the week every week. Now, we can also create, so, the previous one was a function that got triggered by an HTTP event. Now we don't do that anymore. We have an event hub trigger. So every time something is added to this event hub, it will run. This event hub is most, it can take away more uh, events than your own Azure function, or you have to scale it a lot, or you're paying for a lot. So in this case, this will the event hub will gather everything, and then your code can easily simply do everything itself by a, on on a slow pace, it doesn't need to be super fast. So let me just start this one up, set a starter project. Now, in this case, I needed to, of course, send an email. So, oh, there's already something in the event hub. I probably sent something out. Let's go to the next one and let me just send an email just to be sure that it's the last one. So I'll send a new email. I'll send it again to myself. There we go, test, test, there we go. Normally, an incident report should come in, so it's a little bit slower. See, there's already the incident report. Now, my event up, if my subscription is still alive, I hope so, should be triggered. Think so? Is it? Yeah, Let's see, could be that my trigger is not working anymore. There we go. He sent one more email just to be sure. You know what? Let's update the subscription. So I have my subscription. Let me quickly say this one, as you can see here. So this is the important part, actually. So if you, this is my normal notification URL. So I have a function. Hey, Microsoft Graph, call this notification URL. In this case, no, call this event hub. And this event hub, as I already said, it's not. This is not the, con uh, the connection string to my event hub. No, this is to my Azure Key Vault. I put it a little bit bigger so you can see it. This is to my Azure Key Vault secrets and the one I called Event Hub Graph. And of course, it my tenant ID has to be in it. So the moment I run this one, it will create a new subscription. Oh, I of course have to put it to. We go set a starter project and then we have a subscription how am i doing on time i have to stop talking within two seconds so we have a subscription let me try the last one set a starter project good to go and as you can see here this event up this is the magic so as you can see here, let me go until where's the message volume. So this is actually not the email that got sent. It was the subscription I just created. 
but the subscription is already created. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to return whatever code. So in this case, the subscription got created. I have a subscription. Now I can send an email and it could, it's good to go. In the end, I'm not using a, um, I'm not running all my code at once. No, I'm starting a durable function. So in this case, a durable function, which is super cool. If you haven't used it, use it. So um, it will get my data loss prevention entity. It will call whatever rule you want and it will report my email. So let me go back to the slides. Let's do a quick recap. So we can use the Microsoft Graph subscription to get notifications about events, in this case, emails, but OneDrive events, Outlook events, security alerts, SharePoint teams, whatever you want, there's a lot of them. Uh, we use event up to increase performance and stability and to make it a little bit easier for us developers. Also, the public URL is not exposed because we, we don't say, uh, we, as you can see, the Microsoft Graph only knows our uh, key vault and we can use transport rules to keep subscriptions to a minimum. Uh, I've added the green sources here. You will get those later as well. Thanks. Awesome. Very, very cool stuff, Rick. Really appreciate diving in deep there. Uh, really interesting to see and appreciate the extra effort. Thank you.